I remember you. I pray we have not caught you at an inopportune moment. We wanted to offer our thanks for your kind words in the forum. Well, I could hardly let that Inquisition go unchallenged. I've always believed that curiosity should be nurtured, not stifled. Thankfully, a majority of my colleagues agreed. A slender majority, aye, but a majority nonetheless. Had the vote not gone our way, we would be having a very different conversation, if any at all. Though I'd like to think you would have not given up on our cause. I'm told you paid a visit to the Annex afterwards. Yes, that's right. I was hoping to speak with the grandchildren of my dearly departed friends Gallif and Louisois in a less doer setting. But it seems I just missed you. I still can't believe how much you've grown. If only your grandsires could have seen the way you presented yourselves to the Forum. Why, if fair brought a tear to my own eye. You must have the patience of a saint, putting up with this lot and their antics. Never mind Matoya's prize student. Luckily, I know a thing or two about managing unruly younglings. If you ever need advice, don't hesitate to ask. If I may, there is a rather more pressing matter we wish to discuss. What can you tell us of this duty that the Forum must fulfill? Nothing, I'm afraid. Like all humble servants of the Forum, I am sworn to secrecy. Or rather, I couldn't tell you if I tried. Our duty is of the gravest importance. Furthermore, if the particulars were made public, it would incite widespread panic. As such, those entrusted with this duty have been bound by an enchantment, which prevents us from speaking of such matters without the express permission of the Forum. How is that even possible? <laughs> it's been some time since I last gave a lecture. Please, take a seat. We shall begin by reviewing the fundamentals of etherology. The ether, which imbues us with life, can be categorized into three forms. Two are of the incorporeal sort, the soul, and the memory. Can anyone tell me the third? Yes, very good. This is the form with which the layman is most familiar. Consumed by even the simplest of daily activities and replenished by the food and drink that sustain us, this form of ether is in constant flux. In contrast, the ether that comprises the soul is rarely subject to dramatic change. The same can be said for memory, as the two are intrinsically linked. P. 
Picture the soul as paper and memories as words written upon it. Now, what would happen if that paper was doused with ink? The same type of ether as comprises the memories. It would blot out everything that was written. Precisely. We would be unable to recall the memories, and any activities that depend upon them would be hindered as well. In fact, this exact phenomenon was observed on a vast scale not so long ago. And what might that have been? The Seventh Umbral Calamity. The people of Eorzea vividly recall Bahamut breaking free of the Lesser Moon and raining hellfire down upon the realm. But no one could seem to remember the events that followed immediately afterwards. Indeed, to this day we have yet to determine whether it was an unintended consequence or a deliberate act. The enchantment which binds me and the rest of the Forum is based on a similar principle. And yes, it is a contravention of the Charlien prohibition against the practice of memory manipulation. Only when a new member is inducted and told of our great duty are they subjected to the process. A necessary evil. You have my word that it would never be used to manipulate the populace. I should hope not. But can this enchantment be dispelled and your memories restored? If nine-tenths of our members give their approval, then the process may be reversed. Then, and only then, would we be able to speak freely to others of our sacred duty. Barring that, we must wait until we return to the Ethereal Sea. For there we will be purified, the blots upon our souls washed clean. and our memories drift apart and dissolve. Rather defeating the purpose, I suppose. But there are those memories that are indelibly etched upon our souls, some believe. What happens after that? We are reduced to pure ether, coalesce with that of others, and create souls anew. Alternative schools of thought assert souls remain whole and return to the corporeal world, reborn into another form. Both theories have their proponents. Personally, I consider each equally probable. Well, I think that's enough education for today, now that I've given you some food for thought. Or rather, an entire banquet. I would remind you that although I'm unable to assist you with certain matters, the resources at my disposal may still be of use to you. I'll arrange for you all 
to be given the run of phenomenon. Of course, as associate to our alumni and the students of Baldessian, this privilege is extended to you as well, my friend. Oh, and I suggest you speak with Ki Aliapo. She's well known among the artisans of Charlian, and her network of contacts may prove useful in your search for knowledge. I wish you all, all the best in your pursuits.
by the Twelve. Glad you could join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. As you can imagine, our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. It is a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals assembled for a single purpose. We fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzabad contingent. Indeed, which is why I am glad to find myself in the company of many trusted comrades, yourselves included. Lucia! I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. And for the good of all nations, not least my former homeland, I am determined to see this mission through to its end. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. I have faith that if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. Everyone, if I may have your attention. Might I ask you to speak first? If I must, I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation, here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer. We shall provide support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Of course, with an experienced white mage such as yourself accompanying us as well, those requiring more involved treatment will be in safe hands. Raya O sends her regards, by the way. Suppose I'd better say my peace. Wait, I know you. The name's Sickard, in case you've forgotten. Truth be told, I'd rather you had forgotten. Any road, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason, he picked me. Of course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners, and my reputation's taken enough of a keyhole in as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you got to trust in the commander of your ship. So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. Give them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind, but we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. Well, you're certainly raring to go. But then again, so are we. The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Aldin's behest.
If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. That's where we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarrapin and I will be leading from the front. It's been some time since I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya, the Avatar of Destruction. <laughs> With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits us. And then we might finally get a chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, let's give it our all. As for Ishgard, we Temple Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace and welfare of our allies. The bitter cold of Garlemald is a formidable enemy in of itself. Our experience fighting in ice and snow will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do all in my power to provide you with the leadership and guidance you require. The four High Houses, House Hylenart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature, together with the Smiths of Limpsa Lumitsa. There is another awaiting introduction. Lord Amonalane? Ah, yes. Uh, Emmanuelaine de Forton, at your service. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your twinkle-toed gentleman of light. To regale on a roi with my tales of daring do. I believe that concludes introductions for the Grand Company of Eorzea. Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Would that be the Shinobi of Doma? Actually, they've been tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Out of my way, you preening fool! Forgive us for coming late. We are the delegates of the Eastern Alliance. Cyrena, and you've brought company. For battle and blood we come, as a step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Doma, only to find them beyond our reach. Slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! Sadu Hatun, no. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Warriors of the Steppe, 
We've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are... Members of the Dalmascan Resistance Group, Lente's Tears. And the Bosnian Resistance. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage, and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities. Which is fortuitous, since Garlemald's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. Dalmasca, Bosnia, Alamigo. All lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal is to aid the victims of the Tilophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. And they are victims, make no mistake. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. But after seeing what we've seen, fighting and working against and with Garleans, there's no denying the simple truth. They're just people. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. Fordola, who once swore herself to Garlemald, has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Imperial defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Gaius Bloody Balesar himself is working to help rebuild Whirlit, a nation he once conquered. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. It won't be easy. But we're all determined to make this world a better place. What lingering concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Then we are in accord. Now, let us review our strategy. To reach the Garlean capital in northern Ilsebard, we must cross the central mountain range. Fortunately, Garland Ironworks can provide aerial transport, sparing us this most treacherous part of our journey. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our contingent is an area between the range and the capital, the Magna Glacius. From there, we must travel the rest of the way on foot. We will also need to bring the airships with us to ensure we can withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in snow, we should be able to make use of local roads and shipping facilities. The vast ice field will afford us an unobstructed view of the surrounding area. On the other hand, it will also allow others to easily spot us, so it is imperative that we only make camp in positions where we can easily defend ourselves. And the airships, which must be kept safe at all costs. We cannot account for every possibility, so we must be prepared to think on our feet. We will be tested. Sorely tested, I expect. But for our homes and for our people, and a people not our own but in need, we will succeed. Spare no effort in your preparations. Once we depart, there is no turning back.
Ilsebad, divided in twain by a vast mountain range. Those who would traverse its jagged peaks face peril at every step. But why go by foot when one can simply fly?
on the outskirts of the Imperial capital, in the frozen wastes of the Magna Glacius. The winds howl in icy protest, as if to warn against further trespass. Received word from Thancred's reconnaissance party. They have sighted a detachment of heavily armed Imperials. Survivors of the Civil War, perhaps. Perhaps, but there is more to it than that. Maxima reports that they are led by Vergilia, Legatus of the Third Legion, which comprises the bulk of their number. However, they are also joined by several members of the First. From what I recall, the Third Legion fought for Nerva in the War of Succession following Varus's death. The First, on the other hand, were under the direct command of the Emperor and rejected Nerva's claim to the throne. These legions were enemies. Indeed. In fact, our sources claim that it was a conflict between them that sparked the Civil War. Yet now, these former foes cooperate to defend a ruined Garlemald from invasion. Then it is all but certain they have been tempered. So, what's the plan? If me and my crew is out reaving, we charge straight in, no messing about. But that ain't what we're here for. Quite right. Soldiers or no, they are people of Garlemald, the very ones we have come to aid. Direct confrontation is unavoidable. Nevertheless, we must make every effort to limit casualties on both sides. Rather than kill them, I would remove them from the field. How so? Savage beatings, disarmament and imprisonment? Not impossible, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. Having observed the opposition, I imagine Thancred had something to suggest? He did. He and the other scouts have already infiltrated a supply depot some distance beyond the Imperial Detachment's current position. Stored within is a stockpile of Magitek armaments, and once we give the signal, Thancred's team will destroy them all. In so doing, we will deprive frontline troops of materiel and likely force the detachment to send. Divide and conquer. Not a bad idea. Once the scouts have finished their preparations, we will split into two groups. The first will form the vanguard, while the other brings up the rear with our supplies. As for the Scions, I ask that you lend your assistance where you deem it needed most. I would prefer, however, that you accompany the rearguard and be prepared to join the van at a moment's notice. Kept in reserve as our trump card, so to speak. proposal was well received. More specifically, they asked that we destroy the Imperials' toys in as spectacular a fashion as possible. If 
Stoller always did have a flair for the dramatic. She's not an easy woman to please, but I shall do my best to satisfy her thirst for fireworks. All right, once more for my peace of mind. Our first objective will be to rig the enemy's magitech with explosives. After we've withdrawn to a safe distance, we'll detonate them remotely. Our second will be to issue a deactivation command to the automated units via the control terminal. If our calculations are correct, this signal should reach those deployed on the front line, giving our friends a much needed upper hand. The blizzard will help us stay hidden, so let's aim to get in and out before it passes. Trust in the plan, and we should all live to see tomorrow. In the meantime, I will relay messages back and forth as the situation unfolds. You'll forgive me if I ask again, but are you certain you wish to play the Lone Wolf? Wouldn't have it any other way. Call it foolish and reckless if you like, but I'll get the job done. I always do. Very well. I wish you the best of luck. Keep your wits about you. It's time. We only have one shot at this, so let's make it count.
Must be losing my touch. This is Thancred. The explosives are in place. Very good. All is proceeding as planned. Head to the control terminal. It should be to the northwest. Understood. Have the others wait at the rendezvous point. You are returned, and none the worse for wear, to my considerable relief. What news from our comrades? 
They stand at the ready. Excellent. Then let the fireworks begin. The blizzard's beginning to clear. The vanguard should be engaging the Imperials any moment now. If they haven't already. Ishtola and the others are with them, so I'm sure they'll be alright, but... <gasps> Wait! Something's coming! Looks like we ain't the only ones who sent out scouts. Keep them away from the carriages! We lose those, and we're as good as dead! Brief respite, but stay alert. Keep the carriages safe. Display, but the other carriages are still in danger. Go on ahead. We'll hold the line. We're the only ones still struggling. How we put our backs into it then? I've been eating.
back there. We're fine and ready for more. Hear that? Get to the front and turn the tide. from the field was not a euphemism for enthusiastically murder. It's nothing that won't heal in time. The trouble is, their tempering has made them utterly fearless. Subduing them would be easier if they had the capacity to submit in the first place. Well, this is the path our young charges would have us walk, and that we all agreed to follow. You knew it would be hard, yet still you pledged your lance, did you not? That I did. Gilia. Damn it. I need to help the others take her down. There's no end to them. I was wondering when you'd turn up. There's no stopping us now. Come on, let's show them what we're made of.
tremble before the sun! That was the last of them. The day is ours, thanks to your timely arrival. What of the supply caravan? Hmm. Outmaneuvered, but not outmatched. Good. Let us take the Imperials into custody and rejoin our comrades. And soon we shall arrive at the capital. So cold and unforgiving, thus spoke Emperor Solus as he gazed upon his barren domain. Eight hundred years it had been since the Garleans first set foot here. Bested by the Kavosi, after centuries of war and driven from fertile southern pastures into the blasted northern wastes. In that garden of desolation, they clung to one another for warmth, freezing, hungry, desperate, hated. The Chosen Forsaken. In the year 1513 of the Sixth Astral Era, a young Legatus named Sola single-handedly sparked the Magitech Revolution. How did he conceive the machina that feed on Ceruleum? Once a common, soft-spoken soldier, how had he so quickly ascended through the ranks? Like so many others, those who knew the truth are gone. Taking in the capital with his eyes for the first time, I recall thinking to myself, far colder on the earth than in the heavens. Yes, far colder indeed. Bitterly so. Not so much as a whisper. The roads leading beyond the city walls would have been used less in recent years. Nevertheless, this was one of the most important gateways into the capital. Her buzz day and night with activity, aye. 
Merchants passing through the checkpoint, many of them stopping at the local hostelries. Surely they cannot all have been tempered. We can consider the question after we have made camp. If we spend any longer outside, we may well freeze to death where we stand. The tempered Imperials, too. This will be our temporary base of operations. Secure shelter for ourselves and the injured, and dispatch scouts to survey the surrounding area. If we're planning on staying here a while, we ought to give this place a proper name. Hmm. Well, the constant sound of ice cracking underfoot makes me think of broken glass. An apt name, perhaps. But enough of this. To work, everyone!
Our present situation is as follows. Efforts to aid the people of Garlemald have begun in earnest. Moreover, having entered into the capital, the Imperial Palace is within our reach. But before we proceed further, we must learn what has befallen this city. For therein lies the key to understanding and combating the Telophoroi's designs. I have a suggestion, if I may. Several of the Imperial soldiers we captured on the Magna Glacias are members of the Popularis and acquaintances of mine. Once we have cured them of their tempering, they should be able to give a reliable account of the events leading to the capital's downfall. A promising idea. I will assist the healers and their ministrations. Of course, I will require a porxy of my own, assuming you can spare one. Would you like a hand? No, no, I am sure we will manage. Better that you take my place in the field. The noxious ether of this place disagrees with me, and as I shall need to draw on my own for the treatment, it will be prudent for me to remain within the camp. This talk of curing the tempered is all well and good, but I reckon the cold is a more pressing concern. All the houses round here are fitted with cerulean eaters that could keep us warm and toasty. Problem is, the machines seem to have given up the ghost, and if we keep sitting around, freezing our asses off, we'll be next. My smiths reckon that with the right parts, they can have them working again, but it won't be easy. Understood. The machinists will assist them in the repairs. The rest of us should either stand watch or survey the area. We've made our presence known to the Telophoroi. They will be searching for us, if they have not already ascertained our position. That we have seen no sign of them since the battle suggests they have yet to do so. However, I suspect they may be biding their time. Or perhaps we are beneath their notice. In any event, we'll find no answers standing around here. Urianje, Estinian and myself have visited Garlemald recently, so we'll lead the reconnaissance efforts. Perhaps bolstered by a few Bosnian and Dalmaskian scouts from my previous excursion for good measure. Don't forget about us Alamegans. We have experienced scouts of our own. Well now. This is turning out to be a rather sizable team. With such numbers, we should be able to cover a wide area with relative ease, including that surrounding the Imperial Palace. How about you, Graha? I have a feeling we'll find a use or two for that vanishing spell of yours. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service, though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. That leaves us with guard duty. As a matter of fact, I have something else in mind for the two of you and Alphano. Between here and the center of the capital lies the Eblen Rhyme. I would have you search the area for survivors. Your keen sense of direction, honed in your extensive travels, should prove useful in navigating the ice fields. I have faith that you will, and look forward to greeting you on your safe return. You all have your duties. Let us make haste. May the Fury bless and keep you. <laughs>